Les White and Johnny Rapp were one of the top teams. And Johnny Rapp passed away. And they had to get a replacement. So they're looking for a replacement. And once again, my buddy Bob Schiller is in the room. So they said, uh, who are we going to get for replacement? And I said, how about Larry Ron? And that's how I got on the, uh, on the Hope Show. What kinds of things did you write for Bob Hope? Jokes. But you see, when you work for Hope, you not only do the three or four shows that he does, specials during the year, but you're responsible for everything that he does every day, which is open uh, auto uh, uh, shows and uh, beauty contests and uh, schools and appearances on other shows and so forth. And Bob doesn't like to work uh, more than a day ahead of time. So what would happen, like right now, I, the phone would ring, it would be Bob. And he'd say, Bob, i say, who is it? I have a son named Bob. I never know who, which one it is. And uh, he says, I, I, I need uh, three pages of uh, chorus girl jokes. So what I would do would be excuse myself, go back and write three pages of chorus girl jokes, phone them into a secretary who taped them, and go back to what I was doing. And uh, so on election night and so forth, we had had to be up all night and uh, feeding, uh, feeding the stuff in. And uh, so it was Les White and Larry Ryan instead of Les White and Johnny Rapp. How did Bob Hope treat his writers? How did he what? Treat his writers. Beautifully. He uh, had a, a very friendly kind of, uh, of relationship with the writers. He liked nothing more than to come back in the writing headquarters and put his feet up on the desk and, 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 and chat with you. And uh, to this day, after all these years, I get Christmas cards every year from him. So he, uh, he never, never loses a friend. But uh, we had uh, some funny things happen when I was on the Hope Show. Uh, Bob resented the fact that Saturday Evening Post came out with a story that he was worth $500 million. And uh, it demeaned him as one of the fellas. And we felt that right away. And he said, you know, he says, this is a gross exaggeration. So there's Mr. Hope, you're wanted on stage. So he goes out on stage and says to the audience, it's a gross exaggeration. They didn't know what he was talking about. He says, oh, this article of mine that says I'm worth 500 million. He says, maybe 300. So to him, this, this made the difference. So when I left him uh, to go on All in the Family, I said, it's how much I enjoy being with him. I said, it's too bad that we, we have to uh, sever relationships. We've got so much in common. Neither of us is worth 500 million. So uh, he went overseas when I was there, and he took one of the other writers with him. And when he came back, he had about 11 hours of uh, raw footage. And uh, Mort Lockman and I sat through the, all the footage. And it really told you the story that uh, Hope was not going overseas to, to make some money or to make a radio sh uh, television show but he was filling a need for these kids because he was home to them. And when you saw these things with the kids, uh, th a thousand kids there, they weren't all at that camp. They came in from seven in the morning and then hiked in and uh, drove in and so forth and waited hours uh, to, to see Bob. And uh, as they drove along, we had footage of these kids holding up signs, hiya Bob, you know, say hello, say hello to Crosby, and all that sort of thing. And they all had their little cameras, you know, to take. It's very cute, and it was a, a very necessary thing. So I, I'm sitting there with Bob Lock, uh, Mort Lockman and Hope, and uh, finally, they, you know, they said, God bless you, Bob, and you're wonderful, Bob, and so forth. So Bob says to me, what's the way to Mount Rushmore? So I said, you're there already, Bob, right in back of Washington. 